In this video, I want to show you how to prove rigorously a formula that is uh, very important in multivariable calculus. In particular, I am referring to double integrals, and I have integrals of this kind, integral of a function f, which depends on the variable on the variables x and y, dx dy. We are integrating over some region in the xy plane. This is equal to an integral. Now, if we go from the variables x and y to the variables u and v, we are going to integrate over some region in the uv plane. The function f will be expressed in terms of uh, the variables u and v. And then here we will have a determinant, a determinant of um, the Jacobian matrix. So we simply call it the Jacobian. The Jacobian is the determinant of the Jacobian matrix. And in the first row, we have dx du dx dv in the second row we have dy du then dy dv and then we integrate over du dv sometimes it is also possible to express this this jacobian as the transpose of what i have written here the determinant of the transpose is the same so it doesn't really matter if you write it in terms of the transpose of this matrix Essentially, we have already proved this formula by showing that this small element, dx dy, this area element, transforms like this. And I have shown it intuitively, and also it is possible to show it by using the so-called Stokes theorem. And I have shown that this area element transforms like this. But now, in this video, I would like to prove directly that this integral transforms like this. So I want to prove it rigorously without, uh, let's say, using only the intuition that this area should transform like this. And I'm still going to use the Stokes theorem, but we are really going to, to, um, to prove directly that this formula holds. And in order to do that, I'm going to define a vector function, g, which is made up of two components, gx and gy. And I'm going to define this function such that f is equal to dgy dx minus dgx dy. So basically, it's as if we were considering the curl of the function g and then we put it equal to f. And um, now, if I rewrite f in this manner, I can rewrite the integral of f dx dy like this. This will be the integral of gx dx plus gy dy. So this will become a line integral over the boundary of the area because the integral over some closed line g dot dx we know from the Stokes theorem that this is equal to the integral over some surface and the boundary of that surface is given by the line so we have some kind of line, some closed line and then we associate this line with uh, some surface and then we can define the normal to the surface and here we have the curl of g dot n ds and if you consider the curl of g dot n so in this case I'm going to consider a surface which lies on the xy plane so it will be something like this assume that I take a line on the xy plane and then I'm considering just the area enclosed by this uh, line and the normal to this surface will come out of the xy plane so this n here will be along z, the z direction and if you consider curl of g dot n you will get this expression here so we have transformed our integral into a line integral 
And now we are going to go from x, y to u and v. So we can rewrite this integral like this, integral gx, and now we have dx du du plus gx dx dv dv, because x will depend on both u and v in general. And then we have something similar for this differential element. So we have gy dy du du plus gy dy dv dv like this. And now we can rewrite this expression like this integral and then I can collect the terms which multiply the differential du. So I, I will have gx dx du plus gy dy du times du plus and here I have gx dx dv plus gy dy dv dv like this and now we can use Stokes theorem again right because we have some function that we have to think in terms of the variables u and v this time which multiplies du and then I have some other function which multiplies dv so we have a vector a vector field whose first component is this one and the first component goes along u let's say and then the second component goes along v and it's exactly this one so we can apply Stokes theorem one more time and basically we will get an integral over some surface in the uv plane and we have to take the derivative with respect to u of this component of the field so the v component so we have gx dx dv plus gy dy dv and then i have minus the derivative along v of the first component of the field. So we have gx dx du plus gy dy du like this and then this multiplies du dv. From here this will become equal to, now we simply have to do some calculations. This is an integral of, we get uh, dgx du dx dv plus gx d squared x du dv plus dgy du dy dv plus gy d squared y du dv then we get plus minus and then here we have dgx dv dx du minus gx d squared x dv du minus dgy dv dy du minus gy d squared y dv du like this and then this multiplies du dv like this now you can see that we can we can simplify some terms this one cancels this one and this one here cancels this one and now let's rewrite this expression this is equal to integral and now I'm going to rewrite the four terms that I have this one, this one, this one, this one I'm going to rewrite these derivatives dgx over du dgy over du dgy over dv and dgx over dv I'm going to rewrite them by using the chain rule so in particular this first one will be rewritten like this I will have 
dx over dv and then dgx over du can be written as dgx dx dx du plus dgx dy dy du like this and then I have plus dy dv and this one here I will write as dgy dx dx du plus dgy dy times dy du and then I have plus minus I have dx over du which multiplies this but I can rewrite that as dgx dx dx dv plus dgx dy dy dv minus and then I have dy du dgy dx dx dv plus dgy dy dy dv and this multiplies du dv like this and now you can see that some of these terms cancel because for example this term here cancels where is it this term over here right they are exactly the same with opposite signs and then we also have this one here which cancels this one down here right when you take a look at this one multiplied by th these two it's exactly the same as this one multiplied by this but with an opposite sign so the expression simplifies a little bit and now we can rewrite this in this fashion integral now I have dgx over dy and this multiplies dx dv dy du from here and here and we also have another term this one here which multiplies dx du times dy dv so minus dx du dy dv and then I get minus dgy dx times and I have dy du dx dv from here and then I have minus from here I have dy dv dx du so dy dv dx du and this multiplies du dv but the content of this parenthesis here is the same if you take a look at it so we can factor the parenthesis and we are left with the uh, integral d gx dy minus d g y dx and this multiplies dx dv dy du minus dx du dy dv du dv and let's change the sign here minus plus and therefore we have to change the sign here as well minus plus and now you can see that this this thing here is the Jacobian because we have the Jacobian dx du dx dv dy du dy dv and what is this? This is exactly the function f if you recall because we defined it exactly like that 
you can see the definition here where g is a, an arbitrary function so we didn't specify g and therefore this is actually very general and now we get back this expression here without specifying g without constraining g so we we found exactly the formula that we wanted to find this formula this formula here that we wanted to prove in a rigorous way and this is the proof in in general in general uh, when you consider the jacobian you really need to consider the, the the absolute value of the jacobian to be very general because after all this area here should transform into an area which is also still positive right so that's why usually here we put also the absolute value of the jacobian if you really want to be very general but this is the actual the actual proof that i wanted to show you because it's not really so let's say frequent to see a precise proof a clear proof an accurate proof of this theorem usually it is more convenient to derive this uh, transformation law here intuitively by considering how this area transforms into this area here and it is also possible to generalize this theorem to more than two dimensions but here i wanted to consider the simple case of two dimensions